So I did my presentation on street art. We see a lot of street art popping around, like up everywhere um, in town. I mean, the more you look um, for them, the more you see them. Um, and um, we start to wonder like, who does it belong to? Um, what rights do the art have? What rights do the artists have? What rights do the property owners have? And um, street art is a very important form of expression for a community. And um, historically, um, throughout protest movements, civil rights movements, anti-war um, movements, the street art was always the form of expression that the community took to the streets to show that they are um, angry with the injustices um, done against, against them. And um, to deny a community that outlet is basically taking away their freedom of expression and their freedom of speech. And um, in South Africa, if you um, destroy a heritage site that was done in commemoration of an anti-apartheid strife, that could amount to arbitrary deprivation of property, which is against our constitution. And um, so street art is a very important form of communication to the community's members itself and also to the public. And um, on the individual level, so what about the painter? What about the artist? Um, the artist will have the, the, the painting, the, the mural, the actual mural will have protection if it if it qualifies as copyright. So if a work qualifies as copyright in South Africa, it only has to be original and it has to be fixed in some form of, um, to some form of material. And um, originality is basically an, ex, like a, it's a, um, it's the amount of labor that you put into it. It's the amount of effort, the time. It's, it's not necessarily the artistic merit of your work. So you can make a little mural and it doesn't have to be great because um, art isn't necessarily graded by what is good and what is bad. And, and this is, so anyway. Um, um, so street art does qualify for copyright protection and the artist will have certain moral rights in terms of their copyrighted work. So they will always have the right to paternity to be named as the author of the work and they have the right to have their dignity and honor um, intact. So you can't desecrate someone's mural and, and get away with it um, and then um, have, bring shame upon the artist. And, um, and there is also economic rights, but economic rights is also, um, bear in mind, economic rights is, is a like commercial exploitation that is usually up to the owner. So if you are the owner of a work, which is usually the artist, but in terms of copyright, it could be a commissioned work or you could be employed to do it. And then that, that painting actually belongs to whoever commissioned you, whoever employed you to do that. Um, there is certain economic rights. So you can sell it, you can, you can paint over it, you can make it into a reproduction. You can basically do whatever you want with it if you are the owner. And you have a right that other people may not um, commercially exploit your work um, and not compensate you. So um, advertisements and brands and influencers on social media can't um, take your work and put it in um, their advertisements um, on YouTube or on Instagram and make a lot of money from it. And, um, and also similarly, um, what else? Da, 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 da. You can't make films and then just randomly use a lot of street artists and kind of connect to their brand and their name without due credit to the owner of the work and also the author of the work. Um, so uh, on the other hand, we have the proprietor. If someone paints on your wall, what, what can you do? Are you the owner of it? And um, also it's a bit of a chicken or the egg came first kind of question because um, there is this, this mismatch between copyright and property law, um, which is the civil law, and, and there's always the strain because on the one hand, we want to protect the copyright of the artist and the owner of the work, but on the other hand, we're infringing on someone else's property law rights. And um, the most feasible, and, um, the most feasible um, way of trying to address this issue is by saying that 
um, the, the movable piece, so in, in other words, the painting, became part of the work through accessio, which is rooted in Roman law. And because of that, um, the owner of the ball, which is usually the most, um, the, the most valuable, um, becomes also, also becomes the owner of the actual painting. Um, and then we have a non anomalous situations like, for example, if Banksy paints on your house, um, the Banksy painting will probably be more valuable than the house. But, um, but those are anonymous, anomalous situations and they're not generally regarded. So in terms of South African property law rights, um, the owner of the wall does indeed become the owner of the painting. And that is it for me.